In Space Station 14, solar power is a great auxiliary power to the station, and on some stations, like Moose and Bagel, and this is Moose Station, it is almost required, or not required per se, but very, very helpful. Well, in order to start producing solar energy, the first step is to find this, the solar control, solar control computer. So when you click on the solar control console, you're going to see this graph that shows where the sun is. And really, you don't even have to worry about the, the graph itself. You just need to worry about the stuff on the left. Okay, so the sun angle is obviously moving upwards. Well, so you could adjust the panel to meet it, like 219, but it isn't going to follow it because I don't have any angular velocity set. Every single round, the angular uh, velocity will change. So what you all, all you want to do is try to get your angle to match this angle as closely as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're still going to produce a ton of energy as long as you're close. But getting the velocity right is the most important. So what I'm going to do, just to catch up, I'd like to start with somewhere around like 5.6. And it's now just a matter of watching. So I'm 0.8 behind. And if I just keep watching, I should either gain or lose on it. So I'm actually still losing, so I need to go up to, let's just try 6. And I can jump up to 224 as soon as it turns, like that. And let's see if I can maintain the pace. If it goes up, I need to increase the velocity. If I go ahead of it, I need to decrease it. Okay, I'm still not fast enough. So let's try 6.5. That might be overkill, but as you can see, you should be able to get the gist of what you have to do. Once you set this up once, you don't have to do it again. It is set for the rest of the station until somebody <laughs> changes it. Seems like I need to go higher still. Alright, I am very close. Like, this is, I would, it's not perfect, but it will basically maintain the correct angle forever. I think 6.6, .6, actually no, 6.7 was working fine. So now the solar panels will basically perfectly align for the rest of the station's life, and... Even if you're a little off, it ain't hard to come back and just fix it. You might have to fix it once when you're as close as that. Well, step two. Not all solars are connected by default. And there's two things you'll need. One, you're going to need high voltage cables. And I recommend bringing a lot. Two, you're going to need EVA stuff. So that includes your good old oxygen tank, a breath mask, and your hard suit. Oops, I got to take my helmet off. And... How do you find solar panels? Well, there's two ways. You could just wander maintenance until you find a solar control area. Or, in this situation, or what I would recommend doing is you will always find the solar panel areas if you just go out in the space and follow the edge of the station. This is essentially foolproof. So as you can see here, this is another solar control area. And you can see that my, uh, I should probably turn my breath on. This is another solar control area. And you can see the HP cables come here, lead to a cable terminal, and charge the SMES directly. So what you can do is you come here and you say, oh, look, there's a HP cable that is linked to nothing. Well, as you can infer, these cables are showing us the way to a solar branch. And all you have to do is connect these orange wires together and you can see they bind together and solar panels can daisy chain together like so. So all you have to do is just keep connecting them until every single one connects and now this entire solar branch is set up and will be generating power for the rest of the game until somebody either sabotages it or a meteor hits it. You get the point. So the two main parts of solar power, or the only parts, are solar panels, which generate the power, and the solar tracker. The solar tracker is what hooks up to the computer, and this is what makes the solar panels rotate. So if you watch closely, these will eventually, act, I mean, they're turning as right now, but they are turning because they're set up to the tracker and are set up to the computer, which is telling them to rotate. Uh, that's actually really all there is to solar. Solar is quite easy to set up. Uh, I recommend you set it up every time. It is never enough to power an entire station, but it is definitely enough to give the station much extra, much needed extra power. And say the AME ever gets blown up, I don't know why I don't see people do this. You could just separate 
the power grid from the solar to the rest of the station and power up an SMES directly. And you can use that to like kickstart a branch for a little bit, like cargo potentially, to get more AME parts in or whatever. But I'll let you figure that out in game. Uh, one last thing I can add, you can actually craft additional solar assemblies. So all you need is uh, the assembly parts in glass. So like if I come up to one of these, you can deconstruct it real quick just to show you. So you can just crowbar it and you could just add the glass back to finish it. So yeah, it's just a, it's just one of those things that's in the construction menu. Uh, that's really it. Really short guide right now, but I wanted to do this because I've noticed a lot of people on Moose Station specifically, which you probably won't see it again on Low Roleplay or on Lizard, but a lot of people are not setting up solars at all and the station lose power because this station actually can't survive off one AME, a one core AME, so solars would let you overcome that. Uh, that's all I got for now.